time. We'll just enter straight into worship. Come and let us go up to the mountain of the Lord. Amen. Where he will teach us of his ways. We shall walk in his path. And the word shall go forth from Jerusalem. Amen. Hallelujah. Come and let us go up to the mountain of the Lord. And to the house of our God. again, Lord, under the auspices of your Spirit, Father. Lord, how we desire, Lord, that you would change lives this evening, Lord. Father, how, Lord, you would shake the very earth that we live in, Father. Lord Jesus, Father, Lord, we've just sung that, Lord, you would teach us of your ways and we would walk in your paths. Lord, that's our desire, Lord Jesus, to hear from heaven. Grant us, Father, revelation from heaven. Lord Jesus, Father, may you speak, and when you speak, may we hear, may we listen, may we act upon it, Lord. May, Father, you undo all the works of the enemy, Lord Jesus, and anything that he's trying to do in our lives, Father. May you neutralize his power. May you neutralize everything that he's trying to do in our life and cast him away, Lord Jesus. Father, as your word goes forth, may the devil leave, Father. May all of his devices be broken down and, and everything, Lord. May all sickness be broken down, Father. Lord, if there's any ailments in this building tonight, Father, may, Lord, your children, may we all rise up in victory over the enemy, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, you are the balm of Gilead, Lord. Father, we desire that balm tonight, Father. Lord, we desire healing in our bodies. We desire healing in our spirits, Lord. We desire, Father, your healing power, for you've risen with healing in your wings. Hallelujah. Oh, God, may the, you spread your wings upon us, Father, this evening, Lord. Father, as we spread our little eaglet wings, Father, to fly on the currents of your Holy Spirit tonight, Lord, Father, we look to you. 
We look to you for sustenance, Lord. Anoint the ministry tonight, Father. Let us hear from you, Father. Lord, may you break every fetter, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. And reveal freedom tonight, Father. Oh, God. And Lord, Father, may it just be so real to us, Lord. Come to us in mighty revelation tonight, Father. We depend on you. We dedicate the service to you. We dedicate ourselves to you. We just love you, Lord, and we want to make you smile, Lord. Father, because you're our king and you're the beloved of our soul. You're everything to us, Lord. Just have your way in this place. Take control of every spirit, Lord. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Oh, my. Count your blessings. Name them one by one. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. When upon life's billows you are tempest tossed. When you are discouraged, thinking all is lost, count your many blessings, name them one by one, and it will surprise you what the Lord has done. Count your blessings, name them one by one, count your blessings, see what God has done. wonderful Amen. how blessed we are think upon these things saints Amen. think upon the things that God has done for you hallelujah angels will attend amen oh canst thou bind the sweet does it doesn't say my chain today oh Influence of day, oh, loose the band of Arya. Can thou bind us? Influence of day, oh, loose the band of Arya. Can thou bind us? 
thou bind. stretched forth the heavens. Lord, you gave the sun its own little orbit, Lord, of the universe. And you gave us our own little orbit around the sun, Lord. And you gave us our own little circle of influence, Father, in our own lives. And Lord, you can bind all of the influence of all these galaxies and stars and you hold them all in place by your mighty hand. Father, Lord, let us, Lord, recognize 
the all supreme, all sufficient control and love that you have for us, Lord. Praise your mighty name, Father. Lord Jesus, let us rest in you, Father. In the name of Jesus Christ, we thank you, Lord. Reveal that omnipotence to us tonight, Father. We love you, Lord, and bless your name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Give ear to my words, O Lord, and consider my meditation. Hearken unto the voice of my cry, my King and my God. For unto Thee will I pray, my voice shalt Thou hear in
shall we? Gracious Lord, how thankful we are. We can say, blessed be your name. Amen. Lord, and yeah. we're so thankful when we sing this song, Lord, let your people proclaim you are holy. We're not just talking, singing about someone else. We're singing about us, Lord. We want to proclaim you're holy. We want to proclaim you're worthy. We want to proclaim you're wonderful to us, Lord, that Amen. you first loved us, oh God. Hallelujah. Father, we want to lift you up and say you're the King of kings and Lord of lords. We know that one day we're going to crown you, but we want to crown you now, oh Lord. Father, we want to lift you up on high and give you praise and glory like you deserve, O Lord. Yes, Father. And Father, we're so thankful we can be gathered one more time. We just pray you bless our time together. Lord, anoint your word one more time. And Father, just bless those who are watching on the internet. Father, just go to where they are as well. May it be like they're on the front row. And Lord, may you just have your way among us tonight, Lord. Please grant it, Father. Please commit the service into your hands. And we thank you for this privilege of gathering unto you one more time. In Jesus Christ's name, I want to commit the service into your hands. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Amen. Thank you, musicians. Amen. Well, God bless you all. It's good to have everyone out tonight. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. So, yeah, good. Yeah, iPad. <laughs> Need some notes. Amen. Paperless office is where they're going for, so we're going to... Faithless church, I guess. I anyway, hey. praise the Lord. Let's go, let's go to uh, Genesis chapter 3 and verses 8 to 10. Trust everyone's had a blessed day. In spite of whatever you may be facing, we're blessed. Amen. Good to have Ilana here with us. Amen. God bless you. Sister Savi, it's always wonderful to see you. God bless you. Um, so Genesis 3, 8, uh, verse 8 to verse 10. And they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God among the trees of the garden. And the, and the Lord God called unto Adam and said unto him, Where art thou? And he said, I heard thy voice in the garden, and I was afraid, because I was naked and hid myself. And let's just go to, let's go to uh, Matthew chapter 14. And we're just jumping right into the story of Jesus walking on the water and Peter walking on the water. I'm going to read from verse 24 down to verse 27. Let's read from verse 22. And straight away, Jesus uh, constrained his disciples to get into a ship and, go t and to go before him unto the other side while he sent the multitudes away. And when he had sent the multitudes away, he went up into a mountain apart to pray. And when the evening was come, he was there alone. But the ship was now in the midst of the sea, tossed, within, tossed with waves, for the wind was contrary. And the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went unto them walking on the sea. And when the disciples saw 
him walking on the sea, they were troubled, saying, It's a spirit, and they cried out for fear. But straight away Jesus spake unto them, saying, Be of good cheer, it is I, be not afraid. Amen. May the Lord bless the word. You may have your seats. I want to, I want to take those three words, be not afraid. You know, it's amazing when you think about it where Jesus sent his disciples on the boat. He was the one who commanded them to go there. But then the very one that they were, uh, they were looking for to follow them walked out upon the water to them and they were scared. You know, the, there was the wind and the waves and the, and the boat was tossed. And, you know, the, they were, the disciples, maybe they were concerned about the, about the weather. But then when the God that they were following and the God that they were serving came into their midst, they were afraid. The very one who could have delivered them, the very one who created the winds and the sea had come to them and they were scared. They were afraid. And it's amazing when, you know, Adam, Adam before we read there in Genesis chapter 3, he was never afraid. He, he, he never feared. It never came near his mind or his imagination what it was like to be scared. It never came into his mind or imagination what it would be like to be afraid of the very God he loved. But yet we understand sin came into the picture and, and suddenly man had a bunch of emotions they had never experienced before. And we see that the very God that came to help him, that same one they were scared of because we, it, it's incredible. The one that could deliver them from their situation. Here they were. He was God over the earth. God had made him thus and he had fallen. And the only one who could restore him back to that position was looking for him in the garden. The only one that could help him was looking for him in the garden and he was afraid of him. Amen. It sounds a bit crazy, but this is man's condition. Man's condition is always afraid of the one that can help him. Man's condition is always, they try and do it themselves. And we understand if you read that whole chapter 3, they sewed fig leaves together, they made aprons, and they covered their sin. And we understand a religion is a covering. Yeah. Amen? They made their own religion, and it was covering their very sin. Yeah. And they thought they were fine until the very God that made them came into their midst. And they recognized that their own ability did not cover or undo what had happened. And they were afraid of the one that could fix the problem. It's incredible how you say, well, what, is this, what has this got to do with me and my situation? Very simple. Many times we're afraid. We're afraid of God. Are you with me? I know it's a Wednesday. I know there's not many of us here, but many times we're afraid of the God that can help us. Amen, because, you know, God wants to take all fear away Amen. from his children. Amen. He wants to totally annihilate any instance of fear or being afraid of the God that can help you. Because Adam knew that God was a man, a God of his word. And he said, the day that you eat thereof, the day you shall die. And he understood that, and so he was afraid that the God that made him now would what could have destroyed them. But he did not understand that man was a part of God. If you're a son or daughter of God, you're a part of him. Just like your natural children are a part of you parents, and your children are a part of your parents, you could not disown your parents in any way, you know, that, could, that, that, that it could be actually proven that you didn't come out of them. It's impossible. They take a blood test, you take a blood test, the DNA matches. I mean, out of 7 billion people in the world, however many percent, you know, are of the age bracket of childbearing age and male and female, you could not be matched to another parent. Amen. If you took the DNA of every parent upon the earth, the match would be perfect. And you could not deny your parents and your parents could not deny you. They could say, no, they're not my children, but the blood evidence proves that you are related. And the blood evidence proves that you are their offspring. Yeah. Amen. You cannot, you cannot in any way change the evidence. And Adam, when he fell, he forgot that he came out of God. Amen. When he fell from his position, he forgot that he was part of the very God that was walking down among them, hearing the voice in the garden, and he was afraid. 
And now here we come, and we're born in sin, shaped in iniquity, come to the world speaking lies, and we have no idea where we're from. We have no idea, you know, we think this is my culture, this is my nation, this is maybe the church I go to, this is what I believe. But then when God comes upon the scene, and He opens your eyes, Amen. that it's more than just a mental understanding, I come from God, I go back to God, but there comes a revelation into your soul. Amen. I come from God and I go back to God, because I'm a part of God. Amen. Right. Amen. So, And that now should take all fear away. Because God does not want you to be afraid of Him. God does not want you to be scared of Him. Doesn't matter what condition you're in, He does not want you to be afraid. But the greatest tool the devil uses is fear. And Brother Bram says the greatest paralysis in the church today is fear. Amen? That man is afraid of the very God they worship. Now, in Israel and the church, part one, this has been the greatest thing I've found among Christian people throughout the entire world has been a fear. They're always afraid. When a little sickness strikes, they're afraid. Many, I wonder sometimes, and now I'm along with you, but now what I'm trying to do tonight and in this week to come is try to drive that fear away by God's word. Now, you would come to me and say, well, Brother Bram, I believe this. No, I believe that. There's only one way in the world to prove. Now, I can't go by somebody's experience, somebody's church ritual. There's only one proof of what it's all about. That's God's Word. Now, if God's Word says a certain thing, then I've got to believe that that is the truth. I want to leave that quote there. I wish I'd put it up. But we must understand the devil, remember, God wants you to know who you are. Amen. Your homework for the rest of the week is to listen to who is this Melchizedek. Amen. You must listen to the service before Sunday because I'm going to go into some things. And I trust it just to, I'm going to just lay a bit of a foundation kind of tonight. But I want you to really listen to it because I want you to see. Well, I trust the Holy Spirit will, will reveal to you who you are and it will destroy all fear. Doesn't matter if you're on the mountain or if you're in the valley, you are victorious over everything, Amen. or the mind battles are wearing you down, it's irrelevant. Amen. Amen. You must see who you are, yeah. and it'll take out all the fear. Amen. Just the simple, just the simple fact that we are the children of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Should take all the fear away. Adam was afraid. Now I just want to I want to keep my mark here. I want to come back to this quote. But now, this word afraid in, in that, that we read about in Genesis was to fear. It means, it means to revere. It's a cause to be frightened, to be made afraid, to be fearful. So they were fearful of the very, of the very God that made them. Now, Job, I want to... Just go into, I just trust, I, I hope this all comes together at the end. But now, Adam, and, Adam was afraid because he was in a fallen state, but he is still a son of God. But he, was, but he forgot that fact. He was afraid that because he had fallen, God was going to destroy him. But God can't destroy his children. All that the Father has given me, Jesus said, already given me, will, you know, all that the Father has given me are mine. I can't remember the scripture verbatim. And all that come to are no wise cast out. Amen. Amen. So he's saying, they've already been given, and they're going to come to me. And all that come to are no wise cast out. Amen. So Jesus already has a set number, and he's not going to lose one. None of God's children are going to be lost. It's impossible. They cannot be lost. You cannot be lost. Amen. It's impossible. You cannot go down in defeat. Amen. Now, remember, victory and circumstance are two different things. Victory is I've been redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. Nothing's held against me in this world or the next. That's victory. Jesus paid it all and I receive it. Amen. Someone say hallelujah. Amen. You've got to push this home. Come on, friends. We're going to have church tonight. Amen. But you've got to understand, that is victory. There's nothing held, there's no evidence against you. 
It's been annihilated. It's been washed by the blood of the Lamb. The enemy has no evidence against you. Amen. You never did it in the first place. You're justified. The first place is God's mind when he thought of you. Amen. But this message came for you to realize you never did it in the first place. It's for you to realize that you're justified in God's mind before the foundation of the world. When he thought of you, he didn't think of your struggles and your mind battles and the sin you're born with and whatever that you're carrying. He didn't think of you that way. He saw you redeemed, mature, made in his image, washed in his blood. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Virtuous, righteous, Amen. bride of Christ. Hallelujah. That's how he saw you. And he wants you to know that. Amen. I mean, he wants you to recognize who you are. Amen. And so Job, so Adam forgot just because he had fallen, he forgot now God is going to destroy them. But God could not destroy them. That's why he brought in redemption. And he gave them the promise, the seed of the woman is going to bruise the head of the seed of the serpent. Amen. Hallelujah. In other words, I'm going to come in flesh and I'm going to undo everything that just happened this day. And he didn't just speak it in words. He covered them in lambskins. Right. Hallelujah. Pointing to the Redeemer coming and he covered their, covered their sin. Hallelujah. So they had evidence. They had evidence that their sin was going to be done away with. And now the bride of Christ has evidence. Hallelujah. The bride has the Holy Ghost. Amen, has concrete evidence. Amen. Hallelujah, that your sins have been taken care of. We're not looking forward to him coming. We're looking back, thanking him that he did come. Amen, Amen. and now you individually have evidence. God is alive. Amen. God is real. Amen. God has transformed me. Amen. God dwells in me by his Holy Spirit. Amen. Mm. Amen. Right. You have evidence. Mm. Yep. Right. Hallelujah. Yeah. Their lambskins, eventually, if they didn't look after them, the, the leather gets hard mm. and cracked, mm. and you've got to replace it. The Holy Ghost doesn't get old, cracked, and need replacing. Amen. That's right. That's right. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, Job. So, as I said, victory is different to circumstance. We can just go to Hebrews chapter 11, and let's just go to Hebrews 11 very quickly. And I want to read this. Because... Many times we think of victory as everything goes fine. There's no mind battles even near you. You're victorious over everything. There's no hardship. There's no struggles. You just crest every wave. Amen. People think, oh, if I, if I had the Holy Ghost or if I... See, the devil tries to make you doubt your experience. And he tries to make you doubt what you have. And he comes along, he says, well, if you really had the Holy Ghost, you'd crest every, you'd just defeat every enemy, you'd never have a hardship, you'd never have a mind battle, you'd never fall. Mm. Amen. Remember, there's sin, unbelief. Yeah. But there's little sin, which are things you do. Yeah. And we sin every day. Yeah. We must ma make mistakes every day. Mm. But if the life of God is in you, you won't continue down that way. Yeah. God will direct you. You know something wrong, the dove's flown somewhere. Amen, like Brother Bram told, uh, I think, Dawson Riley, or I think I got his name right, either the Father or the Son, it's like the Holy Ghost. Grieving the Holy Ghost is like, he's like a dove. He flies up into the rafters. Doesn't mean you're not sealed, doesn't mean you're lost, but he just waits there. Then you repent and make it right, then he comes back again. Amen. So it's possible to grieve the Holy Ghost, but it doesn't mean you're not saved. That doesn't mean you're not redeemed. Because remember, we still live in these bodies. And so, wait, you hear where we Now, let's go to verse 36, because many times we love to read. No, let's just read from verse 32. And what shall I more say? For the time would fail me to tell of Gideon, and of Barak, and of Samson, and of Jephthah, and of David, and Samuel, and of the prophets, who through faith subdued kingdoms, wrought righteousness, obtained promises, stopped the mouth of lions, Quenched the violence of fire, escaped the edge of the sword, out of weakness was made strong, waxed valiant in the fight, turned the flight of the armies of the aliens. Women received their dead, raised to life again, the others were... Okay, let's stop there. That sounds, that, that sounds inc incredible. Like Rambo coming and just gunning down everyone. Doesn't it? It sounds pretty spectacular. And many times we think, now that's a hero of faith. I'll just say amen for me. That's right, amen. But now... Others, now this is the other side. Others were tortured. 
not accepting deliverance that they might obtain a better resurrection. And others had trial of cruel mockings and scourgings, yea, moreover, of bonds and imprisonment. They were stoned, they were sawn asunder, were tempted, were slain with the sawn. So they wandered about in sheepskins and goatskins, being destitute, afflicted, tormented. Now that doesn't sound... Now, now I understand why I didn't just hear, hear a big universal, Hallelujah! Because that doesn't sound that glamorous. But these are the heroes of the faith. These are people like you who overcame in their age. Amen. These are the ones that didn't fear. And whether you like it or not, we are part of this number. Amen. Amen. So someone who's destitute, afflicted, and tormented. And in my margin, tormented there means evil treated. You know, those that were... They had trial of cruel mockings and scourging and so on. That's, that, that's the believer. Their circumstances didn't, does not sound all that glamorous. Yes, are you with me? Yeah. Their circumstances did not sound that glamorous. But many times we, we, we don't differentiate victory to situation. Yeah, that's right. Amen. Because if we look at situation, one day we're having a glorious time. Amen. Next day it's getting hard and we're not doing, oh, something's wrong. That's Nothing's right. wrong. Yeah. Everything's running smoothly. God's program's running perfectly just right. But you've got to look at the difference between your situation and your victory. Amen. Amen. Right. There's a brother in Canada. He was in the police force. He lost everything. He was depressed. He was down. His life had fallen apart. He was a believer. I think I can't remember he lost his family or what happened, but he was at the lowest part of his life. And then this woman that was working the police force just came in, maybe working the same office. I can't remember the details. But she said, I see God in you. What do you believe? She had traveled to India. She had been all around the world looking for something real. And here was a believer in the lowest part of his life. And says, I see God in you. And then... He took her to the church, and she says, now I see God in everyone. Amen. And she became a believer. Amen. 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 Yep. His situation was terrible, but his victory was victorious. Amen. 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 Mm. Now, if you, now, if we could go back to that brother's life and talk to him at that moment, how are you feeling when you effectively led that sister to the Lord? He wouldn't have said, brother, I had such a prayer beforehand, and God just came down, and everything was going perfect." And the word was just opening. I was shouting and rejoicing and everything was going well. He'd say, I hated, I hated my life at that point. Yeah. If he was honest, he would say, I, hate, I, I hated waking up that morning. Mm. And waking up saying, oh, I'm still in this trial. Yeah. Hello? Yeah. That was his situation. It wasn't his, his vic victory. Mm -hmm. Amen. Yeah. Now, it's not always like that. You must understand. But I'm trying to get you to see it doesn't matter what condition you find yourself in. Amen. If you have the victory, you have the victory. Amen. It is what it is. Amen. Amen. So don't never mix the two. Because that's when the mind battles come is when the hard, hard times come in. And then the devil can get you to think, well, maybe I'm, maybe I'm not where I think I am. Amen. Never take, never belittle what God has done for you. Amen? Never let him belittle it. Because if he can do that, then, then, then the mind battles begin to win. Amen? Hallelujah. Now, Job. God's testimony of his servant Job was, this is a perfect man. There's none like him in all the earth. I don't know how many million people were upon the earth at that time, but there's one without, without equal. Without equal upon the earth, that was Job. Amen. Was it not? That's right. Let's read it in Job chapter 1. Remember, this is you. you, you I, I trust this helps someone. Amen. I say, God, destroy the fear. There should be no more fear. 
Amen. Because ultimately, we're not afraid of the devil. We're afraid of the Lord. Amen. Ultimately. Because you don't walk before the devil, but you walk, walk before the Lord and you want to please him. So you don't care what he says. Ultimately, you care, what does the Lord think of me? And so if the devil can get you to be afraid of God, then that's where the trouble comes in. Amen. So here's Job. There was a man in the land of uh, us, thank you, whose name was Job. And that man was perfect and upright and the one, one that feared God and eschewed evil. That fear is, I believe it's a reverential fear, not a being, in, being terrified. So, and let's go down to, and there was born unto him seven sons and three daughters. Now, let's just drop down to seven and eight. This is when, so, this is, this is Job, Job's divine commentary. Perfect man, upright, one that fed God and eschewed evil. And then Satan goes up before the Lord, and the Lord points his finger down to Job. Right, let's just read verse seven. And the Lord said unto Satan, Whence comest thou? Then Satan answered the Lord and said, From going to and fro on the earth and walking up and down in it. And the Lord said unto Satan, Hast thou considered my servant Job? Now I know I've said these things many times before, but I want it to sink in. Have you considered my servant Job? There's none like him in the earth, a perfect and upright man, one that feareth God and escheweth evil. And then... And then, then they have their discourse after that. But see, this is God. This is what God thought of Job. Yeah. This was God's testimony. You know, when we think of a brother or sister in the church, you would say, you know, someone you admire, you say, what a, what a model believer. You know, such an encouragement in the hard times. Just the Lord, just you, you know, such a great example of what, you know, of God's grace. And God looks down and he, and he sees his servant Job. Remember, God sees all things. And he, and he calls things exactly as they are. He doesn't elaborate. He doesn't exaggerate. He doesn't diminish. He just says exactly, exactly as he says it, that's how it is. And so here's a perfect man. But Job had fear because he didn't understand who he was in God. Amen. He had fear because we read there that Job had seven sons and three daughters. And Job himself would say, in Job 3.25, For the thing which I greatly feared has come upon me, and that which I was afraid of is come unto me. And that was his family died. He didn't necessarily care about his flocks, but remember, one of the things, one of his calamities was all of his children were in a house, and the house fell upon them and they all died. Yeah. And he sacrificed every time they, you know, you know he, he, he offered a lamb on their behalf continually. Amen. But he was, he, was, he was giving the sacrifice out of fear. Instead of confidence. He was motivated by fear instead of confidence that the lamb works. Amen. His, part of his life was dictated to by fear. And he said the thing that he feared came upon him. And you've got to be careful because there's power in the tongue. There's power in the tongue. So the things that you fear and you express, they will materialize because you begin to believe your fear. Yeah. Amen. You begin to believe your fear instead of believing the word of God. Yeah. That's why the things you fear, you know, don't let it grip you in such a way that you begin to believe your fears. Amen. Because as soon as fear comes into the equation, you've got to kick it out. Because fear... Amen hath torment, yeah, right. and torment and fear is not of God. That's right. That's right. Because this word fear in, uh, here in Job, it means to be startled by a sudden alarm. So something that shocks you. Hence, to fear in general, be afraid, stand in awe, be in fear to make shake. So something that startled, startled him. This is what he is afraid of. What if this happened? What if my children died lost, not under the blood? Is living in fear. And his fear. Now they were under the blood because he offered the lamb on their behalf. He was being a good parent. Amen. But he did it out of fear. 
instead of out of confidence. I want you to think about this. What he feared came to pass because he believed his fear and he spoke it. And if the devil can make you fear, it disarms your faith. Either your faith will paralyze the fear the devil tries to put upon you or your fear will paralyze your faith. It all depends who you're listening to. Just because Job had fear, he was still a perfect man. Remember, victory, conditions. Amen. His condition was, I'm afraid for my children. He was looking at situation. Because they were feasting and things going from house to house. He was worried, what if they do something evil? What if they do something against the Lord? He was afraid of the what could be. That's why the imagination can be such a glorious thing, but such a curse. Because Satan pushes that button. Here's the what could be. Comes out on the big screen. 4K video. I've never, I don't know, you know, high definition or even virtual reality now. Becomes so alive and real. And it gets, here's the what could be. And it's never good. Amen. It's never, it's never the, you're going to take a body change. And all your family will come in. And God's just in you. And we have glorious church times and prayer times at home and witnessing and the whole. It's never that kind of imagination. It's, this is going to go wrong. And you see what's already happening because this is going to happen and this is what you did and this is this. And God's not really real and he doesn't really love you. And if he really loved you, this wouldn't happen. And, you know, all these kind of things go on. And he's a consuming fire and he's also a God of wrath, even though he's a God of love, but he's a God of wrath and he's going to punish you for what you did. And all this figures down like this. I'm, I'm just talking about myself, but you know what I mean. This is what happens. And you got, so you've got to think now, when something comes into your mind, you've got to think, what's motivating this? And where's really the conclusion? Right. Amen. Is the, is the conclusion joy, love, peace, long-suffering, something that comforts you, something that guides you, something that settles you, something that increases your faith or your love for God? Or is it fear? So we have to. What Job feared came upon him because he was looking at circumstance and the what could be. Amen. He was applying, he was killing. Now this is just me, but he was sacrificing for his children out of fear. Amen. Instead of applying the token and confidence. Amen. But God, now, God had to come to Job. And he, because Job didn't understand. Here he is, a, a perfect man, without, without peer. And he didn't even know that. He thought he was just regular Job logs. who loved the Lord. People came to him, you know, asked him for advice. He was blessed financially. All these things are going well. And he attributed all that to the Lord. But he really forgot what he was. He didn't even know what he was. He didn't even know where, should his last breath leave his lips, where he was going to go. And then the whole trial happened. Because God came down to him, spoke to him in a whirlwind. I want you to see some things, Job. This ties into Melchizedek and Abraham. I mean, Jesus came, who was Melchizedek, made flesh. The communion, I'm just going to drop a few things in for Sunday. The communion that symbolizes God giving a part of himself to you. The bread and the, the wine. He's giving a part of himself to you because he wants you to be where he is. And now Melchizedek, Brother Bram says, was in a theophany body. And Paul says, if this tabernacle be dissolved, I have one waiting already eternal in the heavens. So God had to come down in time to link us with our theophany body. Okay? Now, I'm going to go into this on Sunday, but this will, I trust the Lord will just anoint it in such a way that you'll just be fearless walking out of this place. Amen? So God, God comes and he gives his word, which is himself to you, and it anchors into your soul. Because he wants you to recognize, I have a body in the heavens. Yeah. Amen. Mm. There's a part of me waiting. Mm. If I leave this body, I have an eternal one. Amen. Yeah. 
And this message has come for you to recognize you have a body waiting. If we all, if this whole world, building was vaporized right now, we'd step into that glorified, you know, into that theophany body. So I don't want to mix the two, but, you know, we have a body waiting. We have a body waiting. And God has come. This is, why, this is why God came to Job. What did Job say after the great trial? Now I know my Redeemer liveth. And with these eyes I'll see him and in the last hour I'll stand upon the earth with him. That's not verbatim what he said, but that's what he said. He said, with these eyes I'll see God. And though the skin wears the sword, you know, destroy this flesh, with these eyes I'll see God. He says, I know my Redeemer liveth. He didn't, didn't know anything about a Redeemer. You read chapter, you know, the first part of Job. He didn't know anything about redemption. But then God came to him. Amen. Where were you, Job? When the stars of, you know, sons of God start, you know, shouted for joy and all these things, the foundation of the earth was laid. Where were you? And God is trying to get Job to see you were there. You were there shouting. You were there victorious. Amen. You were there shouting and praising me. And now I saw that in eternity. But now I want it to be expressed into time. Amen. That your condition before the world began would be manifested in flesh upon the earth. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And that's why Job now, he could say, there's more to this world than this. I have a redeemer. Amen. 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 So now he could see Job. And that took all the fear away. Because he had questions. And if the devil puts a question in your heart, there's fear, always fear involved. How do you know you have the Holy Ghost? How do you know you're going in a rapture? But he puts a question there. And there's always fear attached to that question. How do you know you're going to get well? How do you know this is not going to take your life? There's a question. That's why Brother Brown, you know, put out the book, Do You Fear Cancer? You shouldn't fear cancer. But there's fear always associated with cancer. Amen. Amen. Now, going back to the quote, I won't be much longer. Recently, there was a young minister came to me and told me of a certain situation, said he prayed over it, and he said the Lord revealed to him that it was a certain way. Now, when I read this, really think, no, I'll just read it. And I looked at him a little bit and said, Brother, that's very lovely. I appreciate the Lord doing that for you, but let me tell you something. It's contrary. He said, well, the vision came from God. I said, it couldn't have, brother, because it was contrary to the word. Now, we must prove all things by the scripture. If it's contrary to my faith, and yet the scripture says so, the scripture's right and I'm wrong, see? The scripture's always right. And the only way you can do anything is come back to the scripture. He says, now is that true? I like to hear you say amen when you believe it, you see. So now, this is us. The devil comes to you. And you have mind battles and you're wrestling something. And the conclusion of always his argument is, you're not right with God. Amen. This is, his, this is the sum of the matter. And if you agree with him, now he says, if your faith, if my faith is contrary to the scripture, the scripture is right and I'm wrong. So if you begin to believe you're not right with God, then that's your faith. Because you believe it. But you have to take it back to what does the scripture say about me? What does the word say about me? Not what I feel about me says about me. What does the word say about me? Amen. Are you following me? Because that's why he says the scripture is always right. Amen. And so if the scripture says repent and be baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ for the remission of sin, and you shall receive to the gift of the Holy Ghost for the promise unto you and to your children, those that are far off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. Is that right? Amen. That's right. Whosoever, call, um, you know, whosoever calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And then in Romans chapter 10 says, How can you hear unless there's a preacher sent? And how can he be sent unless he's been ordained to be sent? And, Amen. you know, all those things. So there's a, there's a program. God, God sends a minister and he anoints that ministry and he speaks through that ministry. Then faith cometh by hearing and hearing the word of God. And then you can call upon the name of the Lord. Amen. Because God is working in the soul. You say, Lord, save me. It's already been done on Calvary, but then you accept it. Yeah. 
Amen. Amen. And then you come God's provided way. Amen. Yeah. And what does that mean now? So, so remember when Jesus died, he was wiping your sin debt, past, present, and future sin. Amen. Did he not? Yes. He didn't have to die again. He didn't have to shed any more blood again. By one offering, yes. he has perfected them forever that are sanctified. Amen. The scripture says. So if he did that now, and then here you are 2,000 years down the road, and God sent a messenger to the age, revealed the light of the word to him. That same anointing comes upon a ministry. And then you hear the words of that ministry, and the Bible becomes alive to you. Amen. Amen. And it changes your life. See, the devil doesn't like to remember the time he got defeated in your life. The devil doesn't like to remind you of the time smoking or whatever the world or drinking or whatever was, was cast out of you. The devil doesn't like to remind you of the fact one day he was on your throne. He used to be upon the throne of your heart, but then he got dethroned. And the king of kings came in. That's what the gospel is to do, is to dethrone Satan. Wherever he'll be, you know, whoever will listen, and God come upon the throne of the heart. Hallelujah. Talk about a coup. Hallelujah. Amen. But really it's a redemption. It's a restoration of the human soul back into its right condition. The devil doesn't like to be remind, doesn't remind you of those days. He always tries to sweep it under the carpet. Yeah. Amen. But if God has done that for you, if God has done that for you, then you need to look into the scripture and say, what does God say about me? Amen. All right? right? Let's go to 1 John 1. Now I'm trying to... Let's just read this. First John 1. He says this then, verse 5, This then is the message which I have heard of him, and declare unto you that God is light, and in him is no darkness at all. If we say that we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not the truth. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another in the blood of Jesus Christ. His Son cleanses us from, say the next word, all. sin, all sin, all what does all mean? The entirety of it. The whole amount of it. Not most of it. Not some of it. Not a little bit of it. All sin. Okay? Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all. unrighteousness. If we say that we have not sinned, we make Him a liar in His word. Is not in us. My little children, these things are right unto you that ye sin not. And if any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. And he is a propitiation for our sins. And not, our, not ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. Amen. Amen. Put that on your fridge. Put that on your fridge. See, we have to, because remember, if there's sin or if there's a question of sin, there's fear. Because all oh, the devil dad tries to dangle. Remember, you used to do this and you did this, and it's so real when you when it when it flashes back. Sometimes, amen. And he dangles these things, and what happens when that happens? Fear tries to come in. But little children, we should not fear. Amen. amen. Because if he has cleansed us from all sin, and if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive. Us. Forgive, forgive us of our sins. Is that right? That's what the scripture says. So you've got to take your faith. If your faith is contrary to the, to the word, then you forget your faith and you take what the scripture says about you. Now, in closing, I want to say one of the enemies in the land One of the enemies in the land was the Hittites. Now, I may get this mixed up with another one, but it means terror. Terror, which is a greater thing than fear. But that was, that was what, their, that's what their country meant, was terror. There was terror in the promised land. And the Israelites had to come in, and they had to conquer that terror. Amen? They had to overcome that terror. That was part of the inheritance. They had to overcome it. 
So there's a fear. So that's why you say, why is there fear trying to come in? Because there's an enemy and he's trying to battle against you. Remember, it's satanic power. It's trying to hold you back with fear or terror. Amen. You have to defeat that thing. That's right. Amen. You have to overcome those things. Because we must understand, we get sealed into the kingdom, but then there's a victory to have. There's a full inheritance to possess. And just because we may fall or fail or have all these mind battles, it doesn't mean we're not in the land. That's right. Amen. Amen. You've got to take God at His word. I've repented. I've been baptized. I've been sealed with the Holy Spirit. Amen. That's God's condition. You're in the land. You can't come out of the land. You're in the land. Amen. But then there's, there's, there's land to possess. There's things to overcome. And one of those things is fear. But if we understand, I, I, I don't want to be too long. I'll just maybe just wrap it up with this. Job was afraid. Adam was afraid. He was a man who had perfect fellowship with God. Then sin came in and now he was afraid. Then, but remember, it's just like the disciples on the boat. Gee, God comes into the, into the garden, and the very one that can help Adam and Eve in their predicament, they're afraid of, and they try and hide from. And it's the same thing, friends, today. Don't be afraid. Why does God come? He doesn't come for destruction. He doesn't come for destruction. He comes to his children for deliverance. Amen. If you believe you're God's child, who believes they're God's child? Amen. Amen. Yep. If you believe you're God's child, God will only come to you for deliverance. What about chastisement and everything? That is correction with your best intention in mind. And the reason that he does that is to deliver you from doing it again. Amen. Amen. That's right. So God always, why did God come to Adam and Eve? I want to deliver you from those fig leaves. I want to give you a promise that I'm going to undo these things. Amen. Why did God come to Moses by the burning bush? You know, I mean, I mean, in the burning bush. He didn't want to chastise and say, why'd you run away 40 years you've been trying to hide from me? Now was the season. Now deliverance has come to my children. Why did he come to Gideon? Here's Gideon. He's afraid of the enemy. He's in his own land and he's afraid of the enemy. He's threshing wheat in secret. And God says, remember, that's his situation. How does God see him? You're a mighty man of valor. See, how we see ourselves. Now, it's not being proud. You say, oh, it's proud to see yourself as this virtuous, overcoming, sinless, perfect, you know, bride of Jesus Christ. It's not proud. You've got to see what God has made you. That's right. Amen. Caleb and Joshua, they did not see themselves as slaves anymore. They were once slaves, but they weren't slaves anymore. There came a time when the slavery was done and they knew they weren't slaves. They said, let's go take the land because they saw themselves as God saw them. But the others still, they didn't think, they still, they had a slave mentality. Because a slave is never greater than the, the slave is the bottom of the rung. So how can a slave, uh, a nation of slaves overcome these other kingdoms greater than them? But Caleb and Joshua, they knew what God thought of them. By hearing Moses preach, they they, they understood. We have been made a nation of kings and priests. This is the promised land. Let's go take it at once. You know, why did... It's just all the way through the scripture. God comes to his people to bring deliverance. Don't be afraid of the deliverer. Amen. Why did God come to this lukewarm age to bring deliverance? Amen. He didn't come just, oh, he's going to smite the earth with a curse. Why did he come before? Why, did he, why hasn't he been smitten with a curse yet? Destroyed. Because there's deliverance in the land. God sealing away his children. Taking them out of the way. And then whatever happens after that, well, that's the people's, you know, the, the people made their choice. But God sends mercy before he sends judgment. Brother Bram preached a sermon, uh, God doesn't, you know, God doesn't judge a person without warning them first. Amen. So deliverance comes, and yet we're afraid of the deliverance. Because our situation and our condition, we get mixed up. And we think God is going to deal with us. 
This is the last time. We've crossed the line too many times. He must be sick of me. Hey, he would have been sick of me a long time ago if he wasn't God. But he's God. And he can't lose a part of himself. Amen. Now it's 10 to 9, and I could keep going, but I want to I wanna stop it there. You've got to recognize this is you in God's image, in God's mind. Your revelation needs to match what, how he sees you. And this is why this means you got you to listen to Invisible Union. Go listen to that sermon, because he's talking about you. He's not, no. When he talks about the invisible union of the bride in Christ and the bride that's been united to the bridegroom, he's talking about you. Amen? I trust when you listen to that sermon, you say, he's talking about me. Amen? Sinless, virtuous, never did in the first place. He put a wedding band of premier, uh, predestinated, unmerited grace on your finger before the foundation of the world. That's what he says. I trust there's something in you that says, that's me. He's talking about me. All the other stuff and blasting all the denominations, whatever. I trust you can't, you don't put yourself there. Amen. I trust you don't. You should say, he's actually talking about me. Amen. Because it's like, what was it, Elijah or Elisha that went to the widow woman, Elijah. Mm. Brother Bram says that that widow woman and the prophet was, were the same caliber. Amen. The same caliber. Mm. So God sends the spirit of Elijah in this end time to find a bride mm. for the Lord. Mm. And then now, remember, it's, it's the word that comes out of the, of the prophet. That's Christ. Yeah, the word is Christ. It comes into your home. You entertain it. You look after it. You enjoy it. It comes to you. It doesn't come to everyone else. Elijah only went to a widow woman that was a Gentile. Didn't go to anyone else. Jesus said there's many other widows in that day, but he went outside of the land because that woman was the same caliber as the prophet. A widow woman. Not some queen in a palace. A widow woman. And she said, you know, you know, Elijah comes along and, and, and he says, he says, what are you doing? And, and she says, well, I'm getting two sticks. I'm going to make a fire. I'm going to cook this last bit of bread. And then, I'm going to, and then my son and I are going to die. This is this, this her condition. And he says, he says, now, bake me one first for thus saith the Lord. The oil will never run out in the, you know, and, and, and never with the meal and all these things. This was her condition. But the prophet tells us they are the same caliber. And then Jesus comes into your home. He comes to you. There are many other churches in the days of Lady Osea. I mean, but he came to a place like this. And we received him as he was. Amen. And that, and that, now what does that say? I'm not making some big, I'm not stretching it too far. But he's actually saying now, if the message comes to you, which is Christ, you say, yes, Lord. I love you. I love your word. You're your word. I love it above all things. I'd rather have it than my next breath. Amen. Amen. What is he saying? You and Christ are the same caliber. Amen. That's not, I trust that's not too hard to swallow. He say, yeah, but I'm, 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 I'm struggling and things are hard and I don't know. I have all these things going on. Situation. Who you really are. Amen. I could probably stand here for hours trying to get, if that one thing sunk in, that your situation and, your, and your, your victory with God are two separate things. Amen. It doesn't matter. You know, people, people many times misunderstand. And especially when, you know, death is only a travel bus to get us where we really want to go. Okay? The, the Hebrews 11 says they all died in faith not receiving the promise. So they all died in faith. And that is the main thing. If you go down, as long as you go down in faith. Remember? Situation? Who you really are. <coughs> if this is not even brought into consideration, you'll do well. You'll, be, you, you'll do incredibly well. But if you bring this into consideration and you forget this, you won't do so well. You could be destitute on the street. Your whole world's falling apart. 
your family leave you, your church leave you, your friends leave you, everyone leave you. But if you know I'm a son or daughter of God, you're doing well. That's the most extreme case. You could be on death's door. Everything could be have gone wrong. But if you know, I know in whom I have believed, then you're doing very well. Amen. We have some musicians to come. Don't fear. Fear not. There's a reason why every time an angel, Brother Branham, when the angel came the first time, the first words that the angel said was, fear not. And he says in the um, interview in 20th Century Prophet, he says, and then I knew the same voice that had been speaking to me all my life was now speaking to me. First time I've ever seen him in physical form. Amen. So he was afraid of the voice that had always spoken to him. And it's the same thing with us. Don't fear. Jesus is here. Amen. The same one that leads and guides us every day. That's why Jesus said, be not afraid, it is I. And the angel comes. Many times he says, fear not. I've been sent from the prince of almighty God. The same. Amen. Amen. Let's just sing that song, Be Still. Let's just stand, shall we? Go, go, listen or read, who is this Melchizedek? And I trust on Sunday you'll see. God has imparted. He came down. Why did he die on the cross? Because you have. And why did he become real? Why has he come, become real to you? One reason, because you have a body to step into. And why is communion so special? Because it's symbolizing God gives part of himself. And now, Jesus, oh, maybe I'll, he, he, it's symbolizing he gives part of himself to fulfill the promise of the eight. Mm. And the reason he does that is because, why are you a believer? Because you have a body. Mm. Re, uh, an eternal body. Mm. waiting for you to, when you go from this world to the next mm. that's why you're a believer mm. I'm going to expand mm. it on Sunday but I, I, I trust I just want to drop these things in just for you to ponder why have I been called why do I live the life I live Why go back over your testimony what God has done for you why has he done all these things why has he sent the word my way why is he why do I feel his presence and love him and want to serve him and you know He's more than life to me. Mm. Why is that? Because you have a body. Amen. That though this one be dissolved, you have one waiting in the heavens. Amen. Amen. Let's stand, shall we? And let's just sing this. I'm sailing over the stormy sea. The waves are crashing over and the daylight
Gracious Lord Jesus, oh Father, how we thank you. Lord, I just pray you take these little chopped up words. But Father, may we not look at our situation, 
But Father, may we look at our Lord, our our victory in you. Lord, you paid it all. Father, you were victorious that day on Calvary. You're still the victorious one. Lord, you're still the glorious one today, Father, that, Lord, the enemy's under your feet. And, Father, you want every enemy to be under our feet as well, Lord. Not by our ability, but by your ability. Lord, by your enablement, oh God, that's what you want us to be. Father, victorious over every circumstance, Lord. And, Father, I just pray, oh God, that you would help us not look at the situation we think we are in. Lord, because we identify so many times with that state. But, Lord, that state moves like the tides, Lord. It changes. It's varied. But, Father, our victory in you is constant, Lord. It's never-ending, Father. It's, Father, we're so thankful that you have come and destroyed the enemy's work in our lives. Lord, that we're no longer slaves to Satan, but we love prisoners of Jesus Christ. Lord, you've lifted us high above, Lord, the things of this world. Lord, we were once dead in trespass and sins, but, Lord, you've quickened us to you. Father, you've quickened us by your word, Lord. You've made us alive in you, O oh God. And Father, we want to praise your holy name for that, Lord. There's nothing held against us anymore. Father, but we're sinless as you are sinless, Lord. We are righteous as you are righteous. Lord, we are perfect as you are perfect, Lord Jesus. Not by anything we could ever do, but by what you've done for us. Lord, you became us that we would become you by your grace. We thank you for that, Father. We thank you, Lord, that we're called not to be beaten around by the enemy, Lord, but to, Lord, but to disarm him, Lord, and cut his head off. And Father, we want to praise your great name, Lord. Lord, you don't want us to fear you. Lord, I pray, Lord, anyone who's afraid of you, oh God, may just take it away from them. Father, may they just love you more and more, Father. Knowing that, Lord, you are here not to destroy, but to but to redeem, Lord, to lift, lift those, Lord, lift them up, Lord, into their rightful place, Lord, yes, once Father. where they should be, O oh God. Oh God. Father, may you grant it, I pray. Lord, be with us as we go our separate ways. Oh God. And Father, may we just ponder these things, Lord. And Father, may we see, O oh God, that it's not haphazard that we're believers. But Lord, Lord it's your Jesus, great plan of redemption. Father, it's your, Lord, it's your glorious work from beginning to yes, end. Lord. We love you, Lord. We just want to commit the service into your hands, Father, in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Amen. I mean, let's just finish tonight with, uh, unless you got something. Um, yeah, yeah, I have actually. Yeah, okay, go. Yeah, yeah. I wrote a song, but it's about that. Okay. So I'll sing you, really. I'm a bit nervous, but I'll just sing it. It's because it's the first line is, I will not fear. Amen. Though a host encamp me, in Jesus Christ I'll always have the victory. Amen. Amen. This is my hour, this is my fight. I will be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Amen. I'll put forth my sword in the name of the Lord. My bow will not turn back. My sword will not return empty. And the chorus is, I am a mighty warrior, fearless in battle, Amen. moving forward in the name of the Lord. Amen. And I descend from a line of kings. Amen. Amen. And I will reign for eternity with Jesus Christ. Amen. <laughs> so that's the verse. I will not fear, though a host encamp me in Jesus Christ. I'll always have the victory. Amen. This is my hour. Yes, this is my fight. Amen. I will be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. I'll put forth my sword in the name of the Amen. Lord. My bow will not turn back. My sword will not return empty. I am a mighty warrior. Fearless in battle, Amen. moving forward in the name of the Lord. And I descend from a line of kings, Amen. and I will reign for eternity Amen. with Jesus Christ. Amen. I'll do it once more. Amen. I will not fear, though a host encamp me in Jesus Christ. I'll always have the victory. This is my hour. This is my fight. I will be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. I'll put forth my sword in the name of the Lord. My bow will not turn back. My sword will not return empty. I am a mighty warrior. Fearless in battle, moving forward in the name of the Lord. 
And I descend from a line of kings And I will reign for eternity With Jesus Christ Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. We see you there. Amen. I like it because it's just how I feel. Amen. Yes, it is. Amen. It's true. Yeah, it is. It's all true. Amen. 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 Let's just finish with that. Let's just sing You Chose Me. Amen. Amen. Just as we go. Amen. This is my hour. Hallelujah. I trust you feel that same way. This is my hour to be victorious. Amen. Were it not for thy nail-scarred hands, nail-scarred hands and thorny bands, were it not for thy love for me, unfailing love that shows Such a one condemned as I would have no pardon and I die. But thou, O oh Lord, you took my place, you took my place, you took my place. And you bore my sin on your shoulders when you could have had it all. You chose me to be the one that you would die for, the one that you would save, the one that you would carry from the cradle to the grave. The one that you would care for, the one that you would raise, the one that you would see through every storm and every way, you chose me. You chose me. Your head was bowed, your body shook. Mercy called for ransom, you gave, and I took on your shaking shoulders. My sin was laid. Oh, man.
chose me to be the one that you would die for, the one that you would save, the one that you would carry from the cradle to the grave, the one that you would care for, the one that you would raise, the one that you would see through every storm and every way you chose me. You chose me. You chose me.